It's time for the Wolfpack to get knee-deep in ACC play, and the margin of error sits at a firm zero. Here comes Wake Forest. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Our Thursday sponsor is FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Head on over to FanDuel.com in order to get started. Happy Thursday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone. Joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Kenton, it's time for ACC play. It's time for our annual matchup with the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. NC State has won the last two matchups with Wake Forest, and we would love nothing more than to make it three in a row on Saturday. In the words of LeBron James, Doran needs to hit it. You know what? Y'all been loyal. Here's two more for y'all in terms of the street um, in, this, in this series. Here's the thing. I know that... You know, this is is objectively a game that many people are looking at like, eh, it's gross, doesn't really matter much. I disagree. Like Grayson and I have had many a disagreement about every game is the most important game of the season NC State. Right. Before. And this is just the next opponent that you have to show up for. You have to be prepared for. You have to do things the right way for. While Wake Forest has a defense that, I mean, you could call it that. You could call it a defense, I, I guess. Uh, while they do have that, they also have a prolific offense. So while they have both of those things rolling for them, they are also a team that is coached by Dave Clawson, who has proven that he can be a thorn in the side of the red and white at NC State whenever he damn well chooses to. So this team needs to show up with the right mindset, show up with, hey, we're the better team. We have the better talent. Despite what we've seen so far this season, we are going to show up and dominate this game. We're not just going to win. We're going to dominate. I've had several episodes of PTSD inflicted on me by good old Dave Clawson out there in Winston-Salem. This year, we cannot afford to have one of those. Flat out, Wake Forest is just not a good football team. Now, we're still trying to figure out if NC State is or is not, but we're definitely better than Wake Forest on paper. We're supposed to be. Wake Forest enters this game with a record of 1-3. and three. And defense, like Kenton was talking about, it has been optional. They've had guys playing defense. They're not doing a whole lot of defending. Week one, they opened with a 45-13 to victory over North Carolina A&T. Week two, they lost to Virginia, one-point loss, 31-30. to They got shellacked by Old Miss and Winston-Salem, 40-6. to They had a bye week, and then last week they lost to the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana in a shootout, 41-38. to We are in week six of the college football season. And Wake Forest has not yet played on the road. Their first road game is going to be in Raleigh, in Carter-Finley, our house. We need to make sure it feels like their first road game of the year by how loud we get. Absolutely. This is, the reality is this, right? Wake Forest has one of those atmospheres in terms of football. It's kind of non-existent. It, it's, yeah. there's, there's not much there. With that being said, Nothing is still different from outright hostility. Outright, oh, these fans hate us. These, these fans want nothing good for us. They hope every pop we drink is shaken up. They hope every time we're about to back into a parking parking spot, somebody steals it. They hope that every single time that we think we've got a Friday off, our boss is like, LOL, JK, no half day. You get to work overtime. Uh, this needs to be shown, right? Show up in, in droves as Wolfpack Nation will of course, and just do your thing. Do what you can do as fans. And I'm going to tell you, more incumbent than, or it is more incumbent upon the team to do what they're supposed to do than anything here. Because don't get me wrong, the fans in the stands matter. The home field advantage matters. But again, the with what I see and what I have seen out of these two teams so far, they are another team that I will say it is about how State wants to play this ball game. Because I'm still waiting, searching, hoping, and wishing for that game where I'm like, ah, there's the state team that I thought we were getting. And it just has not surfaced so far. 
this game is very much about NC State. And I know we kind of say that every week about execution, but NC State is the more talented team in all three facets of a football game. They're better on offense, they're better on defense, and they're better on special teams. This game will be about NC State and how they execute. This game is about NC State playing NC State football. If you stray outside of that, that's where that Wake Forest funny business comes into play. Wake Forest is a team. If you let them linger, you let them hang around for long enough, I I literally get like chills thinking about Dave Kloss and ruining my season because it's happened far too many times in the past. Focus, as it should every week, should be at a, a season high on Saturday. Wake Forest, although they don't really feel like a rivalry, it's an in-state rivalry for these two schools. There are three teams on our schedule, more or less, that would love nothing more than to ruin our season. It's Wake Forest, it's Duke, and it's the Dirty Foot Club. We see Wake Forest first, okay? Take it out on these guys. Take it out on their defense, stonewall their offense. Make sure, I've already seen tweets about it, they kind of hit that sim button on the rest of the football season and they start looking forward to basketball. They're already basically there. They're one in three, not a lot of hope for the rest of their season. We need a very similar beat down to the one we handed them last season. In fact, it was 26 to six in Winston-Salem, ran all over them. We had like, I think it was like 250 plus rushing yards. We beat them so bad. Dave Clawson issued an apology to their fan base in the fashion in which we put belt to you know where. That is the kind of Wolfpack effort I need to see on Saturday. I'll tell you what, honestly, and I know a lot of people don't want to talk about this. I think it's a little disrespectful apologizing to your fans after I whooped the wheels off you. What do you mean you didn't show up? Maybe you did. Maybe we were just that much better than you. I'll be damned if somebody sits up here, hey, we apologize for letting these guys beat us. And I'm not going to say, excuse me? I beg your pardon. What do you mean by that? Your boys put their pants on one leg at a time, just like mine did. They woke up this morning. They had a pregame meal, pregame speech, and all that good stuff. Walked through, did the prayer, and all that. What happened happened. You know, but I get it. I understand it because, I mean, hey, who am I to judge knowing that NC State has not shown up for multiple games this year as well? But again, you got to see me next year, and you say you didn't show up? Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, player, because now we're going to make this a habit. Now we're going to make this a routine. Like, did you show up this year? Oh, interesting. Interesting. I'm just, I'm just checking. I'm just checking in on you big time. And that goes hand-in-hand hand with NC State needing to play with urgency. I told you in the intro, ACC play is here. And NC State, their margin for error is zero. You got shellacked at Clemson. And that shortened your window of opportunity here. Now, the ACC still feels relatively wide open, but with one ACC loss already, you certainly can't afford another one and definitely not to Wake Forest. Don't be the team that gets embarrassed by a bad Wake Forest team. Don't let it be you. Let it be the Dirty Foot Club or someone else other down the line. Don't let it be you, especially not in Carter Finley, not in front of this fan base, not after last week's performance where you start to build a little bit of confidence. You need to come out of the locker room and make sure Wake realizes, oh, God, not these guys from last year. They put it on us. Not sure how this one's going to go. It might be this bad again. It should be this bad again. It should be a 20-plus point victory. We talked about the point spread yesterday, five and a half. Sure, based on our struggles so far, I get it. That should also feel a little bit disrespectful. Our football team should not be seen as just a six-point favorite over Wake Forest. We'll get into some of the details of their defense. It's one of the worst defenses in the conference. No exaggeration. NC State in the country. In, in the, the country, I'm statistically in the country, they're one of the worst. That's who we're up against this weekend. We've used the term "get right" game, and I don't want to use it against Wake Forest, but kind of that type of feel to it. NC State needs to put pedal to the metal, play NC State football, and the rest should sort out itself. Coming up next, we're going to get into the details of Wake Forest offense after a quick word from our sponsors. Our Thursday sponsor is FanDuel. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats and view live play-by-play on the very same page you're placing all of your bets. NC State is a five and a half point favorite over the Demon Deacons on Saturday. If you want to lay some action down, head on over to FanDuel. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed after placing just your first $5 bet. Head on over to FanDuel.com. 
middle portion of our Thursday show, now getting into the details of the Wake Forest offense. All things considered, we know how they typically like to run their offense is very balanced. You do still see that here in 2024. In terms of the plays being called, the number of passing plays compared to rushing plays, it's nearly identical in all four of their games played so far. Surprisingly enough, even though they're one in three, they have the fourth best passing offense in the entire conference. They're throwing for an average of 310 yards through the air per game. Now, I'd be shocked if Tony Gibson doesn't have something to say about that. As far as rushing offense, Wake Forest is 12th in the ACC with just under 150 yards on the ground. Now, Kenton, we know that Wake Forest runs the slow mesh offense. What kind of challenges does that present for the NC State defense? It forces a lot of discipline. I've talked about this time and time again. You have to be where you're supposed to be. It does not matter what you think the play is or what it looks to be. Until the ball is committed, you cannot commit. And by committed, I mean it It, it needs to be more committed than it normally is. Normally, players go off of keys. We look at a key in terms of like, uh, so for me as a three technique, my key was oftentimes the peck of the offensive guard, right? And wherever that peck went, controlled where I was supposed to go nine times out of ten. So the same thing applies to almost every defensive player. You have a key or keys that you are supposed to be, okay, if I see this, I my eyes need to snap here. Or my eyes, while they're here, need to be paying attention to this, this, and this. You have to be true to your key and where you are supposed to be based on that key. Because the minute that you say, well, I'm supposed to be in the B gap, but I think I can go ahead and pop an A gap. Boom. Skate is at the doorstep. Ellison is, is finding his way downfield pretty easily. The minute that you say, oh, I know I'm supposed to have eyes on this uh, slot receiver, but it looks like that running back is coming towards me. I'm going to go make a tackle. Boom. Marin is right behind your head going for 50 yards. So this is a scheme where you have to stay true to your key. You have to have discipline to be where the hell you're supposed to be or else it'll be a very, very long game punctuated by a potential win by Wake Forest. We spoke on Wednesday's episode about how this type of offense puts a lot of stress on the linebacking core for NC State. It's true. This is going to have to be a really conceded effort by the NC State linebackers to stay in position like Kenton was just talking about. The eye discipline is extremely key against a team like Wake Forest. I remember Sam Hartman used to get really good at manipulating the linebackers in this type of offense, and it, we paid the price for it probably one too many times. Now, the Wake Forest offense from last year is much improved. They were a bit anemic when we saw them again, 26-6 to six last year. This year, a lot more effective through the air. Their quarterback is Hank Bachmeyer. He's a transfer. He's already thrown for 1,100 passing yards, five touchdowns, one interception, but he's been sacked 10 times. That is something the NC State defense will have to key in on is getting pressure into the backfield because Bachmeyer can sling it. They're fairly balanced on offense, and he's been throwing for over 300 yards a game. If NC State wants to slow down that slow mesh, you got to get in the backfield and force some pressure. The One of the main ways to disrupt that slow mesh is to have guys reestablish the line of scrimmage, long story short. When you do that, the quarterback does not have the time to keep going, all right, I'm coming down, I'm coming down, am I pulling it, am I throwing it, am I doing – he doesn't have time because the the thing that gives him that time is the offensive line at least having stalemates at the line of scrimmage. If you are getting knocked back, how far up can the quarterback come feasibly? Let's, let's think about that for a second. If you're creating a new line of scrimmage one or two yards deeper, you have naturally taken away part of it because even though – it does, the offense does call for different things in terms of footwork and arm angles and all that. One thing that I know, and two things for certain, if you make a situation where quarter where a quarterback consistently has to throw off of one foot because there are guys up in the straight, you're going to win that ball game nine times out of ten. Unless you're playing Patrick Mahomes, and I'm sorry to tell you, he will not be walking into Carter Finley in a uh, black and gold you know, uniform or white and black, whatever color they're wearing, he won't be walking through in a Wake Forest uniform, okay? So the the reality is, again, create a new line of scrimmage, be in the quarterback's lap, be in the running back's lap, make it really hard for those guys to breathe and find space in terms of those gaps. 
And hey, if they want to fling it around the yard and they feel like they can go true passing offense and beat you that way, more power to them. Best of luck to them. Make it happen. Two running back names to know are Damon Claiborne and Tate Carney for Wake Forest. Now, Claiborne's a bit more of a shifty back. Carney, a lot more of a more powerful back. They kind of tend to use him in short yardage situations. Wake Forest offense being so balanced and using this slow mesh, sometimes the running backs can be just as dangerous as their top wide receivers. So the NC State defense did a stellar job on the NIU run offense last week. They did a really good job at keeping Ontario Brown in check. They're still going to have their hands full of Demon Claiborne in this one. If you bite too hard on a slow mesh play, Claiborne can bust you down the middle. Now, the two top wide receiving threats for Wake Forest are Taylor Marin. I can't believe he's still at Wake Forest. Feels like he's been there for like eight years. And then Donovan Absolutely. Green. Donovan Green is the other name. He is returning from injury. I believe he's missed like two whole years due to injury. Very talented wide receiver. And he's another guy. Keep your eye on Donovan Green at all times. Not quite an A.T. Perry of years past, but he has the capability to beat you down the field if you let him. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you this. Moran is much more of the possession receiver. He's much more of the I'm going to sit down, find space, find ways to get open. Green is the guy he'll take the top off the defense. And not only can he separate from you running, but vertically, he can go up and get one off your head. So, you know, you look at this team and you say to yourself, if we are going to win this game, those are two guys that you absolutely need to shut down. Coming up next, we're diving into Wake Forest defense after a quick word from our sponsors. Rounding out our Thursday show, diving into the Wake Forest defense, as I mentioned earlier, not good. They rank 16th in the ACC in total pass defense. They're giving up an average of 285 yards through the air per game. The rush defense, believe it or not, is worse. They're 17th in the ACC. That is dead last, 184.8 yards on the ground. Now, I told you they're one in three. They've given up a lot of yards and a lot of points. They give up 31 to Virginia. They gave up 40 to Old Miss and 41 to the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana. If NC State offense can't get right this week, I don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, with all due respect, defensively, we have known that Wake Forest has not presented a problem for most teams for quite some time. Even if you go back to the Sam Hartman days when they went to the ACC championship, it was literally outscoring teams. And I get it. I know somebody's going to say, duh, the point of the game is to outscore people. No, you know what I mean. The point of what they were doing was, hey, if we could just come up with a timely turnover or two, we're going to give up a ton of points. But if we could just get a stop here, a timely stop there, we'll be okay. And so, you know, this defense, I mean, what can you say about a defense that is one of the worst in all of the power four statistically in nearly every category? What can you really say? I will say that they have some pretty good pass rushers, so do not get into a third and long situation. I will say that. I will warn you that that front, when you let them get into those speed packages, they have some things for you. But if you can stay ahead of the sticks, which most teams have successfully done, because they're ranked where against the run, Grayson? 17th, which is dead last in the ACC. Dead last. Dead last. That's last. That's not second to last. That's not potential. They are dead last in rushing defense. You have to be able to run the ball. You have to get some push as an offensive line. And the locked on look of the week that we showed you all yesterday, is that not the epitome of why you want to run the ball well? Linebackers who are coming so deeply into stopping an inside zone split play that all of a sudden you have a wide receiver running wide open behind them. That's what you want to see. And talking about the Wake Forest pass rushers, they are talented but they haven't created a ton of pressure. Only five sacks through four games. The NC State offensive line, they have to prove themselves this week. Not just in pass protection, which by and large has been pretty good, but the run game. We've talked extensively about the NC State run game and how poorly it's performed up to this point. The offensive line needs to establish themselves on Saturday. Announce yourselves to the world. We're not as bad as people make us out to be. In fact, we're going to go push around Wake Forest for four quarters, and we're going to run all over them. One of the bigger reasons our offense as a whole has struggled so much is because of the inability to run the football. The ability to run the football also helps out a true freshman quarterback. It takes a lot more of the pressure off of him. So if we can establish the line of scrimmage, 
established running backs getting into the second and third levels of this defense, it takes a lot of the heat off of C.J. Bailey, so he just has to make the easy throws. That's what we want. You want to get him out of the pocket or even keep him in the pocket and just, just have him complete the easy throws. Get your wide receivers in space, spread them out, and then let them torch Wake Forest defense because it is truly that bad. A lot of NC State fans are like, oh, I'm sure they're going to be bad until we play them, and then that's it. that's typically how it goes. Not this year. Don't let it be y'all. Don't be the team that struggles against one of the worst defenses in the country, and especially not at home. The execution and creativity, I need that to come up a couple notches. And on Wednesday, one of my hot takes is I want to see something from Robert and I. I want to see some creativity in this one. I don't trust that Wake Forest has the horses to keep you in the staple. And I know that's backwards, but you get the point here. I need NC State to be running all over this defense on Saturday. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that. I mean, again, you know, it, at the end of the day, when you're playing a team that's dead last in anything, you ought to be able to do that thing against them. Point blank, period. If a team is the worst passing team in the league, you don't want that team to be able to throw for 300 yards against you. Same thing for a defense. If they can't stop anybody, you don't be the first team that they stop. You don't be the first team that they show up in dominant fashion against in terms of a legitimate team there. So, you know, not surprised by a five and a half point line. I want it to be bigger, but they got to show me something to say, okay, you warranted this line being bigger. You warranted more respect nationally. And kind of in that same context of proving it, now walking back a couple of weeks, Louisiana Tech's run defense was also extremely poor. However, NC State couldn't find a way to get a whole lot established on the ground. So exactly. if, NC State, if NC State can't do it again in this game, I think that that would confirm all of our suspicions. It's that the run offense is just completely ineffective. It's that the offensive line can't get pushed or can't sustain their blocks. A lot of times, and I know we've been harsh, it's just been like a handful of blocks that have completely held us back or a couple penalties. That's one thing I want to see erased in this game. No right. stupid penalties that are erasing 20, 25-yard runs. If I was Jordan Waters, I can't even tell you how furious I would be at several different points of the season. It feels like every single time he, not just anyone else, but Jordan Waters specifically breaks off a long run, there's laundry on the field, it's coming back, and you got to redo it. Don't want to see that on Saturday. If it happens once, okay, sure, that's football. But Jordan Waters, that's a guy you really need to get going. You brought him here for a reason to be a leader out of that backfield. Get him going in this game. That helps out everyone else on the field. And we need to uh, have more tackles broken by our backs. Yes. There are certain schemes that are drawn up and designed to where it's you in a corner, you in a safety on purpose. That scheme is drawn up like that for a reason. Brother, go be an athlete. Go be an athlete. Go show me you want to go bang your head on that goal post. Show me something. Show me some wiggle. Show me some balance. Show me some strength. Show me anything other than, oh, man, almost. Boy, I tell you, if we, you, you, you were one leg away, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it no more. I want to hear, man, those NC State backs, I'll tell you what, they're tough as nails to get to the ground. Last year, the Wake Forest game is really where Robert and I dug his heels in and got cooking. Run it back, Turbo. Run that back. I want to see Robert and I licking his chops when they put him on TV on the CW Network. Let that man cook. Let him get creative, and everybody else, get out of the way. We've seen it before. I know it's in there. I need to see him scheme all of our playmakers into open space, wind them up, and let them go. That'll do it for us here on Thursday. As always, hit that like button if you have not already. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what you think about Wake Forest up until this point of the season. Let us know what you think about their offense, what you think about their defense, what you think about their head coach and Dave Clawson, and how you feel about NC State's chances to bring home the W on Saturday. Mash that subscribe button if you have not already. We'll see you right back here tomorrow on Friday for Fan Friday, Kenton's Keys, and our final thoughts and predictions ahead of Saturday's matchup. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.